The topic of this video is graphing equations by plotting points. Let's look at a problem. y equals negative x squared plus 4. Now, whenever you're graphing an equation by plotting points, the first thing you need to decide is, do you want to assume values for the variable x, or do you want to assume values for the variable y? There are a few things you should consider when making that decision. First, if your equation starts with y equals, then assume values for x, because when you plug in for x, it will be very easy to determine what y equals. If your equation starts with x equals, you should assume values for the variable y. If neither of those conditions is true, such as the equation 2x plus 3y equals 4, then you can assume a value for any variable that you'd like. Let's solve this problem by assuming values for the variable x. We're going to make a table. And for each value of x that we select, we'll plug in and find the corresponding value of y. I encourage you to use a mixture of positive and negative numbers when graphing using this method. So let's establish some, uh, some possible x values here. Let's use 0, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. And once we've done those five points, let's see if there is a recognizable pattern. First. If x equals negative 2, then y equals negative. Whenever you replace something with something new in algebra, the new thing needs to be put in parentheses if the thing you're replacing has an exponent or a multiplier or is being subtracted. Now this is actually a negative sign, not a subtraction sign. But because this x is being raised to an exponent and has the multiplier negative 1, then we replace it with something new, it must be in parentheses. So the negative 2 must be put in parentheses. Now follow order of operations, which says that exponents happen before multiplication by this negative 1. So this is going to give me y equals negative the negative 2 squared is a 4, so then multiplying by the negative makes it a negative 4, and negative 4 plus 4 is 0. Okay, let's try our next value. If x equals negative 1, then y equals negative negative 1 in parentheses squared plus 4. Again, we will follow order of operations. So we get y equals negative. Negative 1 squared is 1, and when that 1 gets multiplied by the negative, it becomes negative 1. And negative 1 plus 4 is 3. All right, that's two of our points. For the other three, I'm going to go a little faster and I'm going to do a lot less algebra. Part of being a good algebra student is knowing your algebra so well that you can do it quickly in your head. That takes practice. All right, when we plug in zero, the exponent happens first. Zero squared is zero. Then we make it negative, still zero, plus four is four. When we plug in one, the exponent goes first. One squared is one, then make it negative, negative one, plus four is three. Plug in 2. 2 squared is 4. Make it negative. Negative 4. Negative 4 plus 4. 0. All right, let's plot these five points. You'll notice that all the y values we have so far are non-negative, which means I can draw my blank grid like this, emphasizing quadrants 1 and 2. My x's go from negative 2 to 2 and my y's go all the way up to 4. I'd like you to notice something about the way I made my blank grid. This is important for whenever you make your own blank grids. You should be able to draw a dashed square centered at the origin whenever you make a blank grid, because this will show you the location of 1 and negative 1 on each axis. This will ensure that your scale of your graph is consistent and therefore the information presented in your graph is not distorted. This may not seem important initially, but it is extremely important when this skill is applied in the real world.
All right, let's plot our points. Negative two comma zero. Negative one comma three. Zero four. One three. Two zero. Okay, well, I was expecting something that was parabolic because this is a quadratic equation. And indeed, my points do seem to form a parabola. That is a U-shaped graph that opens up or down. Uh, some parabolas open left or right, but those are not functions, and so we don't study them here in uh, college algebra. All right, therefore, we have created our graph. Uh, the only thing that our graph needs now is just some finishing touches. So we need to label the y-axis with a y at the top. We need to label the x-axis with an x at the right. Notice that the x and y are put where the values are positive. They do not belong here. They do not belong here. We need a scale on our graph. We're going to call this 1 and negative 1, and we'll call this 2. As long as there's at least one number on the x-axis and the origin, and at least one number on the y-axis and the origin, your scale is discernible by your reader. Okay, great. That's the end of this problem. Let's do another one. Okay, our next equation is y equals 2x minus 4. Now you may recognize this as a line, and there are many methods for graphing lines, but the instructions for this problem specifically say that we have to graph the equation by plotting points. So we must use the method required, and we're going to use the same x values that we did before. Let's start plugging in. All right, if x equals negative 2, then y equals... 2 times negative 2, subtract 4. Notice that the x that we're replacing with a number has a multiplying neighbor. Therefore, when we replace the x with something new, it must be put in parentheses. All right, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 subtract 4 is negative 8. Let's try our next value. If x equals negative 1, then y equals 2 times negative 1, subtract 4. Okay, multiplication happens before subtraction. So 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 subtract 4 is negative 6. So we get negative 6. Okay, just as before, we're now going to do a lot less algebra and a lot more work in our heads. Let's plug in, here we go. Multiply first, then subtract. When we plug in zero, two times zero is zero. Zero minus four is negative four. When we plug in one, two times one is two, minus four is negative two. When we plug in two, two times two is four, minus four is zero. Okay, so this time all of our y's are non-positive, which means when we create our graph grid, we only need quadrants three and four for this particular graph. I'm going to make my dashed square centered at the origin to establish the location of one and negative one on both the x and the y axis. And then once I do that, I can erase my dashed square All right, and now the distance from here to here tells me the distance from all the remaining tick marks on my axis. And now I should be able to plot my points. Okay, here we go, negative two, negative eight. So that would be approximately here. Let me get right up in front of my graph grid and line this up well. Negative one, negative six. Zero, negative four. One, negative two. Two, zero. Okay, if you know your uh, equation forms, then you recognize that this is a line and we are expecting a line as our uh, final answer for this problem. And so the thing you have to understand about graphing lines or line segments or rays 
is that they should always be drawn using a straight edge. So I want you to use a straight edge when you're graphing lines, line segments, and rays. Let me just be very clear with what those are. Lines, line segments, and rays. All of those must be drawn with a straight edge. Okay, so this is clearly a line. I can see that just by looking at how the dots are all connected. And so I get out my straight edge, and I connect all the dots together. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, I don't have a straight edge, so what should I do? So just about anything can be used as a straight edge. Uh, you can use your uh, student ID card. You can use your driver's license. Uh, you can use your gym membership card or your insurance card or even the side of a, a rigid notebook or heck, even an actual straight edge. But any of those things can be used to create your straight line. Okay. So the finishing touches that go on this graph, we're going to put the Y here, we're going to put the X here, and we've already got numbers on our axes, so I think we are good, and that finishes this pair of problems.